Good morning to all of our service secretaries and service chiefs. Uh, we rarely see all of you together. I think that reflects the seriousness with which this committee takes this problem. I think we've all had the same reactions to the very troubling reports of unsafe and unclean conditions at contractor managed housing at military bases around the country. The stories are really terrible. Kids struggling to breathe because of black mold, lead paint, rodent infestations, exposed wiring, doctor's office visits where doctors plead with the family to move out for the sake of their child's health. My office has reached out uh, to Colonel Donahue, the 19th Air Wing Commander and Installation Commander at Rock Air Force Base to explore the issue there. Um, it's not perfect by any means, uh, but it doesn't seem to have the same systemic problems we've seen elsewhere. They've got about a thousand total units under private management. About two thirds of those are occupied, uh, and about two thirds of those report no problems or did not request an inspection. That still leaves over 200 visual inspections that led to that identified problems that are currently being remediated, like moisture and lead paint and uh, rodent infestation. Secretary Wilson, General Goldfein, I know that you will work to make sure that those conditions are remediated promptly. Uh, I also want to commend the Military Family Advisory Network uh, for the work they've done bringing this situation to everyone's attention. Uh, we ought to address it with the utmost speed. Uh, we already ask a lot from our troops and our military families to sacrifice in terms of their freedom and their comfort for ours. I think the least we can do is to make sure that they have a safe, clean home whenever they get off duty or when they're downrange and their husbands and wives and kids are back by themselves. I think we've explored a lot of the fundamental issues already, so I want to give our service secretaries and service chiefs an opportunity to speak directly to some of their troops and families around the world. I know that you don't often get a chance to do this, but this is a pretty high-profile hearing. It will probably be highlighted on the Armed Forces Network and on military family social media sites and in your services respective media outlets. Everyone on this panel has been a lieutenant or an ensign before. So I know you've all worked with junior soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marine to address their housing concerns. Obviously, when you sit in the Pentagon at the top of your service, you can't have visibility into every single one of those. But I know we do expect our young platoon leaders and platoon sergeants and section chiefs to be on top of their troops' living accommodations. So starting with General Milley and going down the row, let's just speak directly to each one of those platoon leaders, platoon sergeants, squad leaders, and team leaders. Um, you do want them to be on top of the living situation of every one of their soldiers, whether they live in on base, off post housing, or they have a family. Is that correct, General Milley? That's correct, Senator. And um, <clears throat> I would say that, uh, as it's been true for 10,000 years of military history, uh, a commander, it's a very special <coughs> duty position. It's a privilege, it's not a right. And our duty as commanders is to be responsible for everything our units fail to do or succeed at. Uh, that's a long, tried and true tradition. That includes housing, readiness, training, fighting, taking the hill, doing whatever. Uh, and that includes housing. Uh, so I want all of the soldiers out there uh, to know that their chain of command is now fully engaged uh, and it is our personal responsibility and we will be held personally accountable uh, for the condition of their living quarters or their houses. Thank you. Admiral Richardson. Senator, the same uh, exists. It's a privilege to lead our sailors uh, in, in the United States Navy. And that, I, I agree with you that the center of gravity is that small unit leadership. And uh, it is not only a privilege to become a small unit leader, a senior enlisted leader or a junior officer, but it's also one of the most rewarding things that you can do to uh, develop uh, those people under your charge. Uh, that development starts with ensuring that the fundamentals, the basics, are taken care of. And I would include not only housing, uh, but also pay, food, safety, all of those things that are just absolutely fundamental to uh, human existence. Uh, I'd just say to all of our sailors and those small unit leaders, we're committed to making that relationship productive. Those leaders will be our sailors' advocates as we navigate through uh, the recovery process here. We will move out with urgency and we will, to Senator King's point, establish a structure that will be sustainable so that we don't find ourselves here again 
uh, in five or ten years. Thank you. General Neller. I would say this not just to the small unit leader, but the entire chain of command. Um, the nation expects their Marines to be the most lethal ready force on the face of the earth. And uh, we have a lot of things to do to achieve that uh, requirement. But part of that is taking care of our families and our Marines and where they live, whether it be in the barracks, whether it be in base, government-owned PPV or out in town. And so um, this is part of our responsibility. I mean, that goes with being a commander, being a leader. Uh, you're responsible for all your unit does or all it fails to do. And so uh, I need everybody to understand why we're doing this. It's part of readiness. We need our families ready. We need a Marine can't be ready if he's not he or she's not living in a secure, safe uh, place. And so uh, I personally commit that we'll get after this. I agree with Secretary Spencer. I think, uh, and, and Chairman Imhoff mentioned this, you know, back in the day, you know, it was a different place, a different time. And I think we took our eye off the ball. And we've been a little busy the last 17 years, as you know, Senator, but that's no excuse. And so we've got to re-educate ourselves about what our responsibilities are as unit leaders, and that includes taking care of the families. General Goldfein. Thanks, Senator. You know, when I talk to young command team groups, uh, senior officers, officers and NCOs, you know, I tell them that we, we, a lot of things we do as senior leaders, we do the best we can. There's one thing we do that's nothing short of sacred duty and a moral obligation, and I believe it's our mirror check, and that's to ensure that every airman that we send into harm's way to do the nation's business is properly organized, trained, equipped, and well-led. And then when they get the job done and return to their families, we've taken care of them while they've been gone. That's a moral obligation. And so my, my message to all airmen is that we are not going to stop until we ensure that we have the system right to take care of them. Thank you, General Goldfein. If I could plead for 30 seconds, Mr. Chairman, I think it's very important that our troops hear this. As Senator King said, there have been reports of retaliation and reports of non-responsiveness to complaints. I would just like our service chiefs to speak directly once again to their troops and assure us, yes or no, that there is zero tolerance for any retaliation if you complain about the conditions of your residence. General Milley. Absolute zero tolerance. Admiral Richardson. Same, zero tolerance. General Neller. Zero, zero tolerance. General Goldfein. Four. There you have it, family members and troops on the front lines when you have these problems, the top boss in every one of your services has said there will be zero tolerance, there will be immediate responses to your problems, you should bring them forward and make sure that you and your families have a safe residence while we work through the bigger structural problems we have.